his heart was broken, mine was mended. He became sin, now I am clean. The cross he carried bore my burden.
Make sure you stay after the service once we close in prayer. Uh, and I'll, I'll announce this again. Uh, be seated. They do have a little gift for all the mothers this morning. Amen. Thank God for that. I believe they, they need to have some gifts every now and again. Amen. Now, I got a few amens. Resty, I don't know. Y'all better take her out somewhere nice to eat today, I'm telling you. But uh, just a few announcements and we'll jump to it. Keep in mind that our website did just uh, get up and running at uh, in New Hope Baptist Church. That's paraphrase, nhbcperlier.com. Go check that out and look at it. And if there's any additions that need to be made or anything that you're curious about, uh, contact Anna Martin. Also keep in mind that the special singing group, Q and the Boys, and is it still the monkey holding the light bulb? If you see that come around, that is Q and the Boys, and they'll be singing for us next Sunday. We're looking forward to that. Our, yeah, they're practicing after service this morning? Not today. Well, we're going to be in for a good surprise next Sunday. Amen. So y'all pray for them. Also keep in mind the barbecue chicken lunch. Uh, the Brotherhood will host their annual barbecue chicken lunch with all the fixings next Sunday, May 21st, following the worship service. All you need to bring is desserts. And if you planned on attending, is today the last day for sign-ups? Today is the last day for sign-ups. Make sure you sign up on the bulletin out here to the left, up at the top of the stairs. Please sign up and get registered for that. Amen. We'd love to have you, love to see you. Also keep in mind, graduates, if you are graduating high school, college, is that included as well? College as well. Please see Steve by May 21st. That's next Sunday at the latest. Please see him and uh, get together on that. For every young hopefuls, our seniors will be meeting at Cagney's Restaurant on Tuesday, May 16th. That's this Tuesday, is that correct? Okay. Y'all bear with me. It's the end of the school year and the days are all jumbling together. All you teachers know. So pray for them, and I'm sure they're excited for that. Breakfast is at 8.30, 8.30, May 16th. If you don't know or you can't remember everything that's announced, make sure you grab one of these little bulletins at the entrances. Amen. Also, just another small announcement. These roses up here in the front. I wanted to let you know that those are the mothers that couldn't be with us here this morning, whether through busyness or just passing away. Thank God for mothers that even aren't here today, but still impact of our lives daily. Amen. Just wanted to glorify and thank them. Anything else, any other announcements before we get started this morning? Amen. All right. Come on, Wayne. sing together the family of God I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God I've been washed in the fountain cleansed by his blood join heirs with Jesus as we travel this sod for I'm part of the family the family 
Let's sing it again. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by His blood. Join heirs with Jesus as we travel this sod. For I'm part of the family, the family of God. If you're in that family this morning, say amen. amen. All right. I think you got them all. What are you going to preach on now? <laughs> Let's turn to hymn number 440 in the presence of the Lord. Hymn 440. There is joy, there is joy, there is joy in the presence of the Lord. There is joy that's full, there is joy that's free, there is joy in the presence of the Lord. And there is peace, there is peace, there is peace, there is peace in the presence of the Lord. There is perfect peace when I rest in Him. There is peace in the presence of the Lord. And there's love. There is love. There is love. There is love in the presence of the Lord. There is love that's real no matter how I feel. There is love in the presence of the Lord. And stand and sing what you're doing. Stand and sing, stand and sing, stand and sing in the presence of the Lord. Stand and sing your praise to the risen King. Stand and sing in the presence of the Lord. It's unique, but it's understanding, and it makes you proud to hear it more. Lord, be with you today as he presents everything to us in the, in the way that you want to be received. And Lord, be with the ones that's not here, whether it be sickness or whatever it is. Be with them and bless them. And Lord, be with our country as in a time of needs that we all need Jesus more and in ever more. And Lord, take, bless the offering we're about to take up and bless it. And we, Pray this in your name, Good to have my pianist back today. Well, as I was looking for 
something for Mother's Day. I uh, Googled mother songs, and uh, that didn't work out so well. <laughs> the judge sang a song, Mama, He's Crazy. <laughs> I, uh, didn't think that would fit. I do a pretty good Willie Nelson, but uh, Mama, don't let your babies grow up to be cowboys. <laughs> didn't seem to fit the venue for today. Merle Haggard used to do a song I would sing uh, about how Mama tried. I turned 21 in prison. <laughs> that didn't work either. <laughs> so I went to the hymnal here, and I looked in the back under indexes, and under Mother's Day, and it said, See Family. So I went to Family, and it said, See Children's Music. And so it's running me all around. So in Children's Music, I came up with uh, Jesus Loves Me. And I thought, you know what, that's a, that's a song that uh, many of us, we probably don't even remember when we learned it. Because we learned it at such a young age. And who likely taught it to us? So as a tribute this morning to mothers, we're going to sing Jesus Loves Me. It's 344. There are some verses in there you probably don't know. And we'll sing them all. Let's all stand. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to Him belong. They are weak, but He is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, He who died. Heaven's gates to open wide. He will wash away my sin. Let His little child come in. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, loves me still. Though I'm very weak and ill, from His shining throne on high comes to watch me where I lie. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. And Jesus loves me. He will stay close beside me all the way. If I love Him when I die, He will take me home on high. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, my Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Amen. Please be seated. <laughs> I mean, if you want to help me, it's okay, no. CJ. It's okay, okay. really. Okay. <laughs>
So, Brian, do I need this? If this is on, am I good? I guess I am. So this is a song, um, I think I did it here for Father's Day last year. And um, the title is simply Thanks Again. And I think I had reminded everybody that day, um, we like to think that our experience with our mothers and our fathers was positive. And maybe for some of us it was, maybe some not so much. But maybe there was that special person, maybe it was your grandmother, maybe it was an aunt, or maybe it was a sister who kind of served in the capacity as mom. So think of that person today. Think of the good things. And even if the well that you have to select from is a little bit soured, remember the good things because there were many. Thanks again. sent bouquets for Mother's Day, for Father's Day a shirt and a car. And though they came from the heart, they all fell short of saying how special you both are. It was until I was up and grown, married with a couple of kids of my own. What I must have put you through So thanks again For the love in the cradle And all of those changes That kept me dry Thanks again For the love at our table And teaching me truth When I told you a lie For taking me fishing and flying my kite and tucking me in yes night after night to my beautiful lifelong friends hey mom and daddy thanks again I think about life and all it's been and how it's all come to today. Our call last Sunday brought to mind that I owe you a debt I could never repay. So thanks again for worrying and waiting when I started dating all For the help with my homework, staying up with me till I got it right. Your car for the prom, the letters from home, but most of all, Daddy, for marrying Mom. To my beautiful lifelong friends, hey, Mom and Daddy, thank again and thanks again for being grand to my children and showing them that there's a God above thanks again for the time that you give them it's your way of showing them genuine love for ice cream and giggles and helping them know they take your love with them wherever they go to my beautiful lifelong friends hey mom and daddy thanks again
Amen. Thank God for that song. Thank God for a mother. Thank God for a father. I'm glad I didn't sing with her. I'd have messed it up. Amen. <laughs> that was wonderful singing, wonderful songs. Am I able to move this? Had someone complain. You believe that? Said they couldn't see me. They said they wanted to see me better. I think they're lying. Proverbs chapter number 31. Proverbs chapter number 31 this morning. We'll begin reading in verse number 10. I thank God for the opportunity to be here this morning and preach the Word of God. And uh, like I said, thanks to the mothers one more time. And I don't know if we'll ever be able to thank them enough. Like the song said it, everything that we do, everything we try and provide, the gifts, even being there. I don't know if we could ever repay what they've done for us. But I think about the same thing that Jesus and His only begotten, God sent His only begotten Son, Jesus. We'll never be able to repay that debt, but I'm glad we get to live and make the most of each moment. Don't let today pass by without letting them know that you love Him. Don't let today pass by without telling your mother, giving her a hug, loving on her, just telling her Happy Mother's Day. Amen. Like I said, it's good to be here. Proverbs chapter number 31, verse number 10. If you don't mind to stand, let you stretch out a little bit and honor the reading of the Word of God. And we'll read this scripture. Proverbs chapter number 31, verse number 10. Who can find a virtuous woman, for her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax, and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant's ships, she bringeth her food from afar. She rises also while it is yet night, and giveth meat to her household, and a portion to her maidens. She considereth a field, and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hand she planteth a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with her strength, with strength, excuse me, and strengtheneth her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold the distaff. She stretcheth out her hand to the poor, yea, she reaches forth with her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry, her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. She maketh fine linen, and selleth it, and delivereth girdles unto the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth while with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up, and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful. And beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. Amen. You can be seated. Amen. Lord, add his blessings to the reading of the Word of God. This morning I want to preach on this thought, good mamas or godly mothers. Good mamas or godly mothers. So I want to go over a few attributes and some things as we discuss this morning. Talk about a few things throughout these scriptures. And there's a lot in those 21 verses that we could preach about and talk about probably for days to come. But this morning I just want to give you a few things and then we'll hit the road this morning. Amen? Don't make your mother pray for the meal. Alright, Keith? I'm going to, I'm going to go eat with one of y'all this morning. Alright, if y'all are paying. Good mamas... Or godly mothers. In verse number 11 we find that it says, The heart of her husband does safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. The first thing a mother is, the first thing a wife is, is trustworthy. A good mother doesn't lie. I couldn't imagine if I'd went to my mom asking for help or assistance or, Mom, I need advice on this. Or, Mom, what do you think about this girl? Or, what do I do now? Or, what's the next step? Or, what's some advice that you have to give me? And the first thing that she'd do would, would be to lie to me. A mother is trustworthy. Amen. I'm sure all the mothers could agree. All the sons and daughters in here could agree. A godly mother doesn't run around. A godly mother is at home. 
A good mama treats her kids how they're supposed to be treated, yet with discipline, but yet with love. Are y'all with me this morning? A good mother is trustworthy. A godly mother sticks around the house, not seeking attention, not seeking her name to be on a marquee. A good mother, a godly mother, is one that loves her children, that is trustworthy, that is honest, not only with her kids, but with her husband. So many times in relationships, I believe one of the biggest issues that we currently face nowadays or one of the departing factors between relationships is the lack of communication. But thank God for a mother, thank God for a father, thank God for a husband and a wife that can humble themselves. We've been preaching about it all these weeks. And just get with God and get with each other and just be honest. Honesty is the best policy, amen? An honest wife tells you about the ups and downs. Can I tell you something this morning? Communication is a two-way street. You can come into a relationship, or for those of you that are married, you can be honest and you can pray and you can read and you can study, but if you're giving 100% and your spouse is giving zero, it's going to be a rough, bumpy, long, weary road. It takes both parties giving it their best and their honesty. Not only is she trustworthy, we find in verse, in verse number 11, but jumping around in verse number 26, we find that she is wise. She openeth her mouth with wisdom. Verse number 10 says, Who can find a virtuous woman? Her price is far above rubies. She is wise. I believe we could all testify this morning. If we would just listen to our mama the first time we were supposed to, we probably could have saved ourselves some heartache. Mama knows best. Amen. Even if you think she doesn't. Mom, you're crazy. Mom, you've lost it. You don't know what you're talking about. You don't understand me. You don't understand what I'm going through. But can I tell you something this morning? A mother is to be wise. Tell the truth even if it's blunt. Can I tell you something? My mother's told me some things sometimes. Definitely my father. My father a whole lot worse. My father doesn't give me any love. It's straight blunt and you're dumb and what are you doing? And no love. But the mother has that wonderful balance of wisdom. Able to give you the truth and honesty and be blunt, but also be loving, caring, and compassionate. That's what a mother is this morning. Are y'all with me? Proverbs chapter number 28, verse number 26 says, He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool, but whoso walketh wisely... He shall be delivered. A good mama is one that is trustworthy. A good mama is one that through experience and through life is able to provide wisdom. But a godly mother is one who does not trust in her own wisdom, but trust in the wisdom of God. A good mama can tell you right from wrong. A, God, a godly mother can, only, can live that right and wrong. Amen? There's a difference in having a good mama and a godly mother. Thank God for good mamas that, that'll tell you when you're messing up or when you're make, making a mistake or can give you advice or lead you down the right direction. But thank God for a godly mother that can do those things, bring you to the house of God, that reads and prays with you and shows you the wisdom of the God of heaven. Thank God for those mothers. She is trustworthy. She is wise. She's also a hard worker. This is seen in verse 13 through 15. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is unlike the merchant ships. She bringeth her food from afar. She rises also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. A mother isn't lazy. Y'all with me this morning? Now, I'm not a mother, but from what I can tell, it looks like a pretty hard job. Cleaning up after me, socks in the floor, y'all with me? Dishes in the sink. You forgot to fold the clothes while I was gone. A mother isn't lazy. Working throughout the day, then come home, then has to organize and clean and then get the food ready. Can I tell you something this morning? Wives, if you're married to a lazy man, kick him in the rear end and tell him to do something. Mm, amen. Y'all didn't expect I was going to preach to the men this morning, did you? Can I tell you something? A wife, a mother is not lazy. I couldn't imagine it. I'm glad I don't have to be a mother, amen? I'm glad I just get to be the father. Working and raising kids, cleaning the house, and attending the duties and regulations and, and all these things. But a good mother works hard for herself. A godly mother works hard for her household. Y'all with me? A good mother works hard for herself, and I, I believe you ought to better yourself and make sure that you have some me time, alright? Listen, I don't, I, listen, I don't know, but from what I hear... Mothers love good just spa days and nails and hair. I heard they love it, okay? There's a good gift. Am I right? Am I right? If there's anything else you want me to say while I'm up here, just go ahead and pass me a car, okay? <laughs> a mother works hard. 
diligently, every day, day in and day out. There's never a day off from being a mother. Works hard not only for herself, but for her kids, for her husband. Can I tell you something? A good mom maybe works hard for herself, but gets distracted in the daily duties. Can I tell you something? Your family needs their mother. Your family needs their mother. Without you, they've lost that foundational portion of their household. Without you, they're willy-nilly going wherever they go. Thank God for the, the authority of a father, but they, they need the loving, caring discernment of a mother. They need their mother. She's trustworthy. She is wise. She is a hard worker. I can tell by the way some of you men act. It must be hard at the house for the mother. Amen? The women aren't saying Amen. <laughs> I promise you, if he says something to you, I'll hold him back, okay? <laughs> but she is also a positive influence. In verse number 12, we see, She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. These kids need godly influences. I don't know about y'all, I've been watching the uh, NBA playoffs. Y'all been watching that? Anyone? Really? Some of y'all are lying, I can tell. Joey, I know you've been watching it. All these kids, all the youth, they look up to these sports athletes. Oh, how amazing. How strong, how athletic. They make all this money. They see these big role models. They see Elon Musk with all this Tesla and SpaceX. And oh, how exciting and how wonderful. And look at all the things they're achieving. Maybe they look to someone in the political office. Well, look what he's able to accomplish. Look at all the decisions he gets to make. Look at all the influence he gets to have. Can I tell you something? Your mother is one of the biggest positive influences in your life this morning. I'm sure we could all agree that. But how many times they go flown under the radar? You look at the big screen and the big TVs and the big name actors and all the big name TV shows, and the mother works hard day in and day out with little to no recognition. Hard working, but yet a positive influence. Can I tell you something? Thank God for mothers that are like that. Thank God for godly mothers. But can I also tell you something? Mothers aren't supposed to act like children. Fathers aren't supposed to act like children. If you have a child, I'm sure you can testify this morning that it's, you can't be a kid raising a kid. It's not going to be easy. Some kids get into circumstances, I suppose, and somewhere along the way it's kid raising kids, but you've got to grow up real fast. You know why? Because that kid doesn't need a best friend. That kid needs a mother. That kid needs a father. I love my dad, and we share some hobbies, and sure, and we'll sit there while he's watching NASCAR, and I'm sleeping. Amen. <laughs> but thank God that we, you can have those friendships and those relationships with your parents, but can I be honest with you? Your kids need a father and a mother. The discipline and the pathway, and for you to pave that pathway, for you to show them right from wrong, but not only for you to show them, but for you to live it. Amen. Thank God that for mothers that are positively influencing their children. Thank God for mothers that not only focus on their selves, but their family. And let me go ahead and say this right here. Thank, I, I, I believe it's important that a woman, when she's independent, that she pursues her dreams. I believe we all have those goals that we go off to college and that we accomplish what we desire to. I believe a lot of times women, when they're independent and alone, they're shunned. Well, you shouldn't follow your goals, and you're supposed to do this, and you're supposed to do that. I believe if a woman desires to go off to college and she doesn't have a family, do so. Follow your degree. Pursue your goals. Same thing for the husband, but can I tell you something? Same thing for the man. But as soon as you get married, can I tell you something? Your biggest and main priority is not me, 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 me. Are you all with me this morning? I believe once you've re received your education, once you've pursued your goals and dreams and whatever it may be, but once you make that decision and take that step into a family relationship with a husband and a wife and you bring kids into this world, your priorities are no longer your first priorities. I'm not preaching this out of experience. I'm just telling you from personal experience, not being a mother but being the child of the family, they put their own goals and desires and willingness and all their dreams aside so that yours could be benefited. That's a godly mother this morning. Thank God for good mamas that, that do achieve their goals. And I believe godly mothers can do the same and can be recognized and can do great things. And thank God for those women. But can I tell you something? There's something different when a mother sets aside her goals, sets aside her will, and lets God move in her life, and she just becomes a mother. That's an important duty this morning. I'm sure those of you with children this morning can testify 
that it's probably easier to go to college than to treat some of these kids sometimes. I get them at the schoolhouse, and I just want to strangle them. I'd rather do homework, I believe. Y'all with me this morning? Does anyone have seventh grade age children? Middle school age children? Yeah, I don't know how you do it. <laughs> I would disown them. <laughs> Son, just go, out, just go outside and play with some sticks or something. We went and seen my brother yesterday, and they recently brought a baby into this world, and we went and saw her. She cried. She cried some more. Y'all know how babies are. And cried. And I'm just sitting there holding it, holding her. Just, okay, that's enough. <laughs> Stop crying. <laughs> I've heard enough. We get it. You're sad. Grow up. <laughs> Y'all with me this morning? I, <laughs> I guess it's just the way... I, is that just how men are? I don't know. I have no idea. But that mother come in there, his wife scooped him up, just hold him, feed him, love on her. Y'all with me this morning? Thank God for mothers that pursue their goals and dreams and work and provide. In the day and hour in which we live, both parties of the household have to work and have to have a job. Amen. Y'all can blame y'all's voting policies on that one right there, all right? <laughs> Gas is way too expensive right now. Let me tell you something. Y'all better be lucky I didn't come on horse and buggy this morning. <laughs> but can I tell you something? They set aside their goals. They walk into the store. Y'all with me this morning? They see something they love. Oh, that's so beautiful. That's so nice. And then they see their son or daughter over there. Mom, what about this? Can I get this? And they set aside their goals and their dreams and their wants and their desires because of the love for their children. Can I tell you something? Nothing else in this world compares to a mother's love. Y'all with me this morning? I'm bragging on y'all right now. Next Sunday I'm going to be hard on you again, so y'all better just enjoy it while we're here. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Wayne got more amens than I did. I'm still upset about that. <laughs> just kidding. A mother is trustworthy. A mother is wise. A mother is a hard worker. She's a positive influence. I believe, and the quote says, behind every successful man is a strong woman. Y'all with me? It takes a mother. It takes that wife. It takes that help meet. Adam couldn't make it on his own. I'm sure he could if he wanted to, but he sure got lonely out there, had nothing to do, bored out of his mind. God took his rib and made a wife. Adam had to have somebody. You have to have somebody. Even if she is a little bit crazy. <laughs> None of the men even moved on that one, brother. I watched them. Behind every successful man, there is a woman. Mark Twain says, behind every unsuccessful man, there's two women. <laughs> Y'all do with that with what you will. I begin to think about some mothers in the Bible this morning. Jochebed trusted God that God would protect her son. Moses, being so young and the king desiring to kill all the newborns, I don't know the age range or bracket, y'all forgive me, but she feared and she protected as long as she could. Gave that baby love and attention, watched over her back and kept her mind and eyes on God and when she couldn't do it no longer, she put Moses in a basket and put him in the river and just trusted God that he would protect Moses, her son. Can I tell you something this morning? Thank God for godly mothers. Thank God for the love and care and the protection they give. But thank God that they're willing and able to understand that God is still in control. I've seen it so many times that mothers would pray for their sons or daughters to return home or get back with God or get back in line with God. Can I tell you something? Just keep praying. Just keep serving. Just keep loving the Lord this morning. Because your kid may be in a basket going down a river and you have no idea where he's going to end up, but God's in control. Amen? I think about my own life, how I left my father and Tammy, my stepmother, and their home, and I went and lived with my mom and acted how I wanted to and did how I want to. And she was great and she was loving and she was caring. And thank God for her that even she would slap me upside the head sometimes and say, get a ride or get out. But can I tell you something? They had no idea where I was going to end up what I was going to do, the life I was going to have. And nothing on them. I mean, they prayed for many years. I probably was moved out for five years or so. And day in and day out and praying. And I remember my dad even telling me after I would got saved that they, at one point he just figured I was a lost cause. I was too young to really remember church or anything like that. And nothing neglectful. I mean, that's just the way it was. I, the life I had lived, the life I had exampled. Well, how's he going to turn out? What's, what's going to happen in his life? But you know what they did? They kept praying. Mother and father kept bowing beside the bedside, praying. Y'all with me this morning? 
You'd be amazed what God can do if you just let go and let God. Ended up coming back to the house and moving back in with my family. For example, like the prodigal son, I guess you could explain it. You know what it was? The tears and the prayers and the reading of a mother. Thank God for mothers. Y'all with me this morning? Begin to think about Jochebed and Moses. What about Hannah? She prayed and suffered, waiting for God to give her a child. Those other women make fun of her and laugh at her. She's barren and she's in, there, she has infertility and she can't, she can't conceive and she can't give a baby. But we can. Look how blessed we are. Look how good God is to us. But then God gave her a son named Samuel. Can I tell you something? If it weren't for Hannah, there would be no Samuel. If it weren't for Jochebed, there would be no Moses. Are you all with me this morning? The love of a mother is uncompared. What about Lois and Eunice? This is Timothy's grandmother and mother. He even mentions them in 2 Timothy in the first chapter. Talks about how they, how, how they loved him and cared for him, and they spiritually guided him and showed him the Word and grew him in the Scriptures. Can I tell you something? Your kids, your grandkids need you way more than you think they do. They're looking to you that you may guide them, that you may help them, that you may grow them. I begin to think about, lastly, this last mother, Mary. Can you imagine the life that she had to go through? I mean, genuinely. There she was, about to be married. All of a sudden, she conceived a child. Can you imagine the confusion, the people in the day and hour in which they lived? Maybe the thought processes they had. Maybe she was the talk of the town. But Joseph, yet they were both presented with angels. You know what they had to do? They just had to trust God. There's only been one person in humanity to ever conceive Jesus Christ, and that woman was Mary. Can you imagine the difficulty and the confusion in raising that boy? There's no telling. But can I tell you something? She still loved him, and she still cared for him. She still provided for him. Mom and Dad still went and did their daily duties and jobs like they were supposed to because they trusted God. Mary, the mother of Jesus. I wonder, I wonder if any of these mothers sat back when they let go and let God. I wonder if they wanted where their kids would end up or where their kids would be. Can I tell you this morning, even as she mentioned it, maybe you don't have the fondest memories of your mother or grandmother, but can I tell you something? In the same thing with all these mothers that I did mention, God was still the one that loved them both. Pastor, I just don't have a fond memory of my mother. Pastor, I just don't have a good memory of my grandmother. Well, guess what? God loved you and cared for you just like He was your mother. Preacher, that's weird. Well, that's the truth. God can be a father when you don't have one. God can be a mother when you don't have one. Y'all with me this morning? Thank God for a trustworthy, hardworking, wise, positive, influencing mother. But lastly, and I'm done, thank God for a mother that is faithful to God. I'm sure we can all testify and brag on our mothers for their hard work and the duties they did and the way they raised us and guided us or did the best they could. But can I tell you something? The difference between a good mama and a godly mother is Jesus Christ. If you're here this morning lost and done without the grace of God, you can still be a good mother. You can still be a great mother and do great things and wonderful things. But can I tell you something? To be a godly mother, you have to have Christ inside of your soul. If these mothers didn't have God, they would have protected their kid done the best they could have for them. They would have feared. They would have been worried. Maybe they would have made a mistake or made the wrong decision. But you know what they did? They were faithful to God. Lord, I can't do it. Lord, I can't control it. But you can. A mother that prays, a mother that reads... A mother that goes to church does her very best. Can I tell you something? That's what we're lacking in the day and hour in which we live. You know what we're missing? Mothers that truly care and communicate and talk and love and show their children the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what we're missing. Can I tell you something? Being a good mama is the bare minimum. That's what you ought to be. Being a good father is the bare minimum. That is what you ought to be if you bring a child into this planet. You ought to be a good mom. You ought to be a good dad. Bare minimum, at the least. 
A good mama is what they should have. A good father is what they should have. But a godly mother and a godly father, that's what they need this morning. Can I tell you something? No matter where you are, what you're faced with, or what you're going through, and I, I know we've kind of maybe kicked it in low gear this morning, but I preach this with urgency and compassion and care, but also bragging on you mothers and fathers. But can I tell you something? If you're not careful, the same way these mothers trusted God, if you lack that trust, Satan can wedge his way into your home. Wedge his way into your life. Y'all with me this morning? 2 Thessalonians chapter number 3, verse number 10 says, For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. Being a father and a mother is a hard job. Raising this old boy, I can sure tell you, it was probably pretty rough sometimes at the house. That last verse, and I'm done. Verse number 30 in Proverbs chapter number 31, verse number 30 says, Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. A saved mother, a godly mother, a church-going mother, a praying mother, a reading mother is the best mother. Are you what you are supposed to be? Are you what you need to be? Are you aware you need to be? God wants to do something in your life. Will you let Him? Do you want Him to? I say this and I'm done. Are you a good mama? Thank God for that. Or are you a godly mother? Let's stand, heads bowed, eyes closed. She comes and plays something softly. Thank God for the mothers this morning. I challenge you this morning. This is my challenge through my message to you. Are you living for Christ like you need to be? Can I tell you something? You can help your kids, you can guide your kids, you can lead your kids, but if you don't give God your kids, you may miss it. It's, I understand the love and the care and the compassion and the fervency and, and how intense that relationship is between a mother and her children, how important they are. The most precious thing on planet earth can I tell you something? You just have to trust God with your kids. You just have to trust God with your husband. But most importantly, you have to trust God with your life. This morning you may be lost and undone without the grace of God. I don't know the relationship you had with your mother, the relationship you had with your father. What I'm trying to get to this morning is that there's a God in heaven who loves you. We sang it this morning. Jesus loves me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves you this morning. He's that mother, He's that father to you. He's the best thing that could ever happen in your life. Do you trust Him? Can I tell you, He's wise this morning, the wisest. Can I tell you something? He'd be a good influence on your life. Can I tell you something? God never takes a day off. Not even a second. God doesn't take any breaks. But can I tell you something too? God is faithful. He's always there through it all. Through the thick and through the thin. When times get rough, when times get hard, when times get difficult, God is faithful. Don't try and change the world on your own, you can't do it. Don't try and control everything on your own, you can't do it. Father, mother, son, or daughter. But can I tell you something? When you trust God, that's when something can happen. If you're lost and done without the grace of God this morning, can I tell you something? He loves you. He desires it all. Come to repentance. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. There's something for to you this morning. God speaking to you this morning? If a mother is that loving and that caring and that compassionate, get up in the middle of the night, go to the cradle. In the middle of the day, stop what she's doing to go help her son or daughter or husband. How much more does God love you? Do you love Him this morning? 
Do you love Him this morning? Amen. You can be seated. I want to once again thank you for being here this morning. I love you all so dearly. I believe in the day and hour in which we live, we don't give enough credit to where credit is due. And i got to admit in my own life, sometimes maybe it's pride or arrogance where we don't humble ourselves before God and just thank God for mothers or fathers and even siblings. Amen. I love y'all so dearly this morning. Thank God for mothers. I don't know about y'all, but thank God for my mother, stepmother. I got two. Isn't that, isn't that crazy? <laughs> Better be careful right there. Someone's, someone's going to clip that out and now post it, and now here I am. He said he has two mothers. Y'all better be careful, all right? I'm wa- Joey, you better not post nothing. I'm watching. Q's already back there, got his laptop pulled out, editing some stuff. I love y'all so dearly. Are they ready? All right, if the mothers will, please.